Well, I mean, art doesn't exist separate from humanity. Art is, art is not autonomous in and of itself. It's, it's something that people make and it's something that people do. And people are always capable of learning and changing. And, you know, the things that we make contribute to that conversation. And so art has the power to be transformative and to, to help us learn, to make us question the, the narratives of the world that we're presented. And, you know, allows us to see the world through a different lens. Yes, it can have a real impact. Uh, it, it can, it can um, wake up the public. It can kind of shock them and they would uh, then kind of uh, wake up from their ordinary everyday lives. The effect of art can be temporal, can be immediate, or can be in the long, long term. The exhibition is a particular method to bring together social scientists with humanities scholars as well as artists and to share these findings with the artistic community to see how aesthetically they can interpret them in order for us to reach the wider communities who would perceive the things that we study perhaps in more visual terms rather than in academic terms. The title of the um, exhibition came first. Um, I went back and read all of the earlier, the, the kind of earlier reports in the DRAD project and what I was finding through all of the reports was this um, very simple narrative of the other for the various you know, um, radicalised groups and extremist hate groups and even um, state speakers were simplifying the idea of the other into this very singular um, identity, this threatening other. I wanted, to, I wanted the exhibition to really complicate that narrative, to really understand that, that there, there is more in this simple binary a narrative of, of, of the other and that when we get to know each other in communities and in our everyday lives at the micro level then we begin to understand and realise that we are very much alike and we have very many things in common. Hi, Dobre Veče, good evening. I'm very proud to be here this evening. My name is Ruth Korkut. I'm a professor of international politics at Glasgow Caledonian University. I'm also the lead for the DRAD project, which is a project on not radicalization, but de-radicalization. I'm hoping that through the course of this exhibition, you're going to question the existing themes in your minds about who the other is. This is an exhibition to cultivate artistic forms of expression using diverse media to interpret the research concepts essential to a multinational with 17 countries and multi-method research project by using art as a medium of interpretation and expression. And we have great artists to deliver that. Thank you. This work that I represent here for the RAD project, uh, the title of the work is By Your Side and it is about running on a bridge between two parts of the cities in Kosovska Mitrovica, South Kosovska Mitrovica and uh, uh, North. Uh, my idea was to run across the bridge and try to scratch uh, with GPS, that imaginary border. Uh, I didn't finish the run uh, between two parts of the city uh, because police stopped me and they said that on that bridge nobody ran 22 years. So after that, I was just thinking and I decided to do something in, uh, did something in Belgrade, in Kosovska street. I put huge parola, Stefan don't know for borders. 
uh, and it means also that art, for art there is no border. It means that the art needs to be free and only if art is free that is good. When I first read the text about the concept of the exhibition, I had to, and I had an urge to further explore what uh, radicalization and de-radicalization actually means. Uh, these two paintings that I've made were based on a Tito monograph from 1971, and uh, I selected a few photos. But in the end, um, I was asked to make two paintings. Mm, my idea was to, to make it a, a metaphorical or a symbolical painting. So the machine that uh, he works on uh, is shown uh, exploding. There is some kind of an explosion taking place. So it's a metaphor for Yugoslavia itself, because uh, no matter how hard uh, Tito and uh, his associates have uh, tried the to, to make uh, this country perfect and uh, full of uh, harmony and stuff like that, it was never, it was always un imperfect. And it's interesting when, uh, because when, while I was working on those, I got a lot more clearer understanding of what the radicalization means. But what I've also discovered is that uh, when, after I was asked to uh, investigate uh, how some of those issues that the radicalization deals with have taken place in Yugoslavia, I found out that some of the methods that um, the radicalization programs uh, use today have perhaps been used uh, during uh, Yugoslavia, even though the radicalization, as far as I know, was not a concrete um, theme back then. I was just thinking really about what kind of things would make people feel, um, you know, make them at risk of radicalisation and so that's things like, you know, if people feel isolated or excluded, um, if they're maybe treated as different and things like that. So, um, so I thought about a local football group um, called Denny Warriors. They work with um, overweight men and men with men mental health issues and so and they're very much a positive force in the community as well. For me, collage is a, it's a great way to, to kind of tell stories, but it's also a great way to, to um, you know, for, the, for your subconscious to, to become visible. Um, because I tend to work organically on a collage. I tend not to plan it out really. I just kind of, you know, I've got a bit of paper. Usually I work quite small, so I've maybe got a bit of paper and I'll just randomly put things down. And it's, it's really just playing about with composition and things like that. Um, however, I always feel like there is a story that comes along. Um, and sometimes it's not obvious until the collage is finished, but I can always kind of apply things. So whatever's going on in my mind kind of comes out in that random kind of place in the papers and things like that. I've used, I've used some images from um, old books, so historical books of Denny, where I come from, so this is where the Denny Warriors is from as well. Um, so, so these footballers that are used in the in the image, these have actually these are from Denny, so from from the past, you know, some maybe 80, 90 years ago, that kind of thing. So that that brings a local connection. I mean, the fact that the works are small. I think, I mean, people usually have to get up quite close to it, which makes it quite an intimate experience, I think. And so, you know, I think, I think it, it engages with them on an individual level. 
I'd like them to have um, their own relationship with it. I'd like them to be able to see maybe a piece of themselves in there and see what it is. Um, maybe, maybe to question themselves, how they view things, how they maybe interact with people, how what they say and do could have an effect on people and, to, and making them feel isolated or unwelcome. Um, so I'd like them maybe to at least just be aware of that to raise people's awareness. Na ulaznim vratima u talanski prostor zalepljena su naša balkanska prezimena. Svako slovo isečeno iz kolažnih magazina, svako slovo drugačije boje, kao anonimna preteća poruka. Mi, teca neprestano grada, teško nalazimo mesto za privremenje življenje. This poem actually talks about alienation. So basically the individual who is completely forgotten. So we came up on this idea, uh, rather by accident, the director who did the movie, uh, uh, Alejandro from Chile, is residing in Belgrade at the moment. And he read my, some of my poetry in English. And then he was like, okay, we need to, let's make a movie about it. Let's make a movie. And this boy, Janat from Pakistan, who is as well like Alejandro, residing in Belgrade at the moment, um, said that he would gladly do it. And then this is the, the result. So this is us. And how this communicates with the whole concept of the exhibition uh, throughout this idea that person is completely forgotten, but there is always something that connects, connects this person to either space or the, or, or some, I mean, thoughts and emotions, basically, so that he cannot be all alone and erased and excommunicated from the from the community or or the whole world. So this is yeah, it has kind of a optimism in the end as well. But I'm am part of the project since the beginning, but as a scholar, I mean as a researcher here in Serbia. Uh, having said that, this is basically the story of my professional life. So when somebody is asking me what do you do, it's really hard to explain. Because most of the people from the project, I mean, my colleagues, they didn't know that I'm a poet, like not at all. Because they were thinking, okay, some researcher from Serbia who is our colleague, he's working as a scholar, he is doing the lectures, he, you know, making presentations, etc., etc. And then, okay, but you're an award-winning poet. Like, why didn't you tell us? So having said that, this is the important part. This is how I get, I mean, I mean, fully as myself into the project, like throughout this perspective of a professional, but also throughout this perspective of, um, of an artist who produces something for the exhibition, but, and then, yeah, I can stand, uh, I mean, I have the, the statement and I, I can stand throughout the, the artwork as well, not just the something which is um, fully objective, totally without the emotions, you know, working on the, and on the research and then publish the report. So this is me, with emotions, with, with, without the, so personal, individual, but also critical in the same ways. As an artistically aware person and an interested person, as well as a professor, I wanted to bring this element of art in, in studying something scientific. While doing that, I also wanted to break the boundaries of rationality that most of the scientific works would have taken for granted. In order to relate to non-scientific communities and uh, the public, I wanted to bring in emotions and I wanted to see how we can reconcile emotions and rationality when it comes to doing scientific research. I also wanted to break the boundaries and let's say the borders of a typical scientific research project would have imposed on us by bringing further interpretations of the issues that we're tackling and we're debating. I was like uh, thinking it's gonna be an exhibition like another when you see some art and stuff and you have like influence on your ideas changing but it was a different kind because the message that is spreading is really Deep. You can like pause yourself and think about what is actually happening in the world and 
if you are making any change on it or just living without thinking about it every day. So. to get involved because I think it, the, the call it did reflect, um, like reading what they were kind of talking about, about um, like what, what I try to do with my art is, um, yeah, find ways to address the, the toxicity that we see in, in mainstream culture and the trauma as well. This, um, in relation to DRADs and talking about hate speech, um, yeah, this perceived binary between love and hate. So there's this kind of uh, old wisdom. I'm not sure who the original author of it is. There's a few people who've kind of said it, but the hate isn't the opposite of love. Fear is the opposite of love, where love is like this force that opens the self and kind of uh, invites things in and is about connectivity and um, kind of expanding consciousness, fear. Fear is the opposite of that. I think that is a really powerful message to help address um, this trauma and this toxicity that we see. A lot of media is framed as as entertainment and as like this spectacle as opposed to um, actually presenting the facts about an issue. How can this be? How don't you see when we don't practice what we preach? We dig our own graves, but I read the dead were going extinct. Red handed in the act, how about that? You have the last laugh before it came to blows and killed ourselves in fear of what we think. Yeah, I guess Steve White is an amalgamation of a lot of these, um, yeah, just Not even of... people, characters. Yeah, yeah. yeah they're, they're not even real people. They are like, yeah, they are characters. So he's a character about good yeah. characters. <laughs> and I think we had that kind of, um, that look and that concept from the outset, but when it came to developing him with more details and even just his name, we were like, what's the the blandest, most broad name that we mm. could give him that still applies to those people? Um, I think we, we definitely approach it with looking at serious topics but in a fun way, in an approachable, translatable way. But I do think if if one person comes in who maybe they relate to Steve White, they have the same views as Steve White, and they watch that six piece uh, piece of art the full way through, and they think, oh, maybe I need to reflect on this one aspect of myself or how I speak about certain people or certain groups, then I guess we've done our job. I work as, a, as an art tutor in a prison and I've worked with people from kind of radicalised backgrounds and I often find, although it may sound fairly kind of trite, that there's often a lot more that kind of unites us than divides us and often, often looking at things that divide us can only really cause more problems and often one-on-one -on -one, people with different kind of like, uh, you know, racial or prejudicial attitudes actually get on very well with one another, you know, because there's a similar kind of polemical way of looking at the world. Uh, it's only really when you kind of get people with certain prejudicial ideas, when they group together en masse, then it becomes a problem because you can no longer see individualistic viewpoint. Uh, in a way, I just thought 
that with, with my, I wanted to shift the focus away from uh, ideas of difference and otherness within kind of like human identity. And I wanted to bring a larger focus on to how that could work in a kind of, from a spatial perspective. And the reason I, the, the insect idea was interesting to me is, you know, insect populations are decreasing at an alarming rate, you know, and in the kind of the, you know, the ecosystem hierarchy of our planet, they're essential to the maintenance of the world that we live in and the way that we live within that with within the world. And so with that decline, it's only further going to impact the ability for humanity to make the earth its home. And so, you know, trying to find a kind of like common focus or trying to kind of imagine the world through the eyes of the other and the other being kind of like the insect kingdom. Like how do, how do we as humans find a way to embrace or engage with the world from a different perspective that is, that is not just solely anthropomorphic. I think most people, if you think of the surface level, people think, oh, art is just art. But art has been pushing the boundaries and changing people's minds for hundreds of years. You know, before there were newspapers in print, we had artists telling the truth um, about what was going on. Um, and I think we absorb art and it, it can shift the paradigm of our thinking without even realising it. Art resonates with us because within an artwork, whether it's poetry or painting or music, there's something about what the artist leaves out that we can fill in with our own experiences and we make this personal connection and it means something to us and it resonates with us. And that's why art has that ability to, to, to make a change, to make a difference, because it can resonate with us all and we all find something in it together. Well, art couches you, comforts you, relaxes you in terms of how you deal with real world issues. This does not mean that art should not or does not disturb you. In fact, you feel that art has changed something in you as you progress with life and as you walk across the, the next uh, challenges of your life.